I remember I, I see someone in the gym who's 65 and it looks like they just started working out and the trainer's giving them like box jumps and uh, and uh, Bulgarian split squats and all these things. And you see them like like almost suffering to teeter over and, I, and I'm, I'm ready to race over and help this person up off the floor. So it's good that there's a there's trainers out there that are really aware of what the limitations are for some of them cl their clients and take a full I guess a full assessment for what they for what they need as far as you mentioned uh rep range because I, I know a lot of people will live for strength and go um between zero and five uh, and then others will go between eight and twelve and now is there any risk if you're lifting more for you know for power and strength if you're doing reps zero to five is there a because it's it's so much weight is there a chance that you're using muscles you shouldn't be using because it, it is so heavy or what's the, what's the, the thought behind that? And not if you're doing it right. So there's, there's right. uh kind of three boxes to check. Um, there's one is competency. Competency is, do you even have the ability to get in the position that you need to get in to do it properly? Right. If you have really poor trunk mobility, really poor hip mobility, you might not even be able to get in the position to grab the bar for a deadlift as an example. Um, and so any coaching that I do after that is falling on deaf ears. So first I gotta make sure you have the competency of no limitations from that standpoint that you actually have the movement ability to, to execute this. The next box is skill. Do you actually have the exercise skill? That's where good coaching comes in. Do you know the difference between a good rep and a bad rep? Do you know all the cues in, in terms of setup to get yourself in the right position, in terms of execution, um, all the way through until that rep is done, what that should look and feel like. And then last but not least is capacity, is that when we get into trouble is, well, I, you know, and where I probably should have put a five on the bar, I put a 10 on the bar and I pushed myself beyond, or I went and got that extra rep that I really had no business getting, or maybe I could normally get that rep, but because I got a crappy night's sleep the night before, I'm not getting that rep today. And if I push through it, that's the day I, I tweak my back. So um, you have to kind of look at all of those things. Going going one to five is is really not the 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 problem. The the problem is is most people don't check all those boxes. Um, and so unless you've checked those boxes, that's where it becomes a risk factor. And then it's almost actually safer for some people, even beginners, to go as little as five, especially on a more integrated complex movement, because once they start to get some fatigue, the first thing's gonna fatigue is their stabilizers, their form's gonna go to pieces. And so I'd rather have them doing sets of five versus sets of 10 or 15, where they might not be able to have the stability and that <clears throat> postural endurance to hold good form for that long. 